Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts at patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. <laughs> Proficast is produced by Bob Grenville. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Look, we have it. We already have an intro. We already have an intro. We don't have to do anything. We don't mm-hmm. have to say welcome to Proficast. No, uh, we don't have to. We we do have to say our names, Tom. Okay. Ryman. Okay. And I'm All David right. Bell. All right, David Bell. Yeah. And uh, we could thank Bob Grenville, our patron, although sure. he's, thanked, he's thanked in the intro, too. This is all stuff mm-hmm. the people listening already know listen, coming into this. Listen, this is the Proficast, all right? Yeah. And we're going to hit you over the head with every single second of this show. Yeah, we are. Uh, Which is honestly know, a, a little bolder than the films themselves. Yes. <laughs> This is all right. This has been I, I was gonna say rewatch, but this is a first time watch of the prophecy series by me and Tom. Mm-hmm. Uh where we 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 I mean these were films that I we've talked about before have been like just you know, they've just been kind on of, the shelf. Yeah, like kind of circle in the perif for a while. Yeah. And I, I they I always kinda of put them in the same space as Highlander, which I'm learning more and more is a it's extremely the appropriate. Place. Yeah, I see. Uh, and I, I already talked about this as well, but I grouped this with like Warlock. I thought yeah, it was like yeah. that kind of movie. And these are—they're not horror uh, series. They're like dramas. Well, they're horror adjacent. But... Yeah, they're not action. No, uh, <laughs> definitely not. But we're we're up to uh, the Prophecy Three: The Ascent, mm-hmm. which continues to have Christopher Walken in it. Yes, but this one barely has Christopher Walken in it. Yeah. Well, all right. First of all, I want to get into the fact of who directed this. Uh, Patrick Lussier. Okay. Uh, so so he's he's an editor mainly. He edited Scream, for okay. example. Mimics. Uh, he he uh, edited Apollo 18, uh, the documentary Apollo 18. Red Eye, a lot of Wes Craven I'm seeing here, but he has directed some stuff, Tom. I'm, I'm, this is all just a preamble for you to blow my mind with whatever the fuck it is he's directed, so let's get yes. into it. Well, hold on. I just, I just clicked on writer, <laughs> uh-huh. and uh, shout out to the fact that he is also the writer of Terminator Genesis. Okay. Uh, but in terms of directing, this was his first movie, The Prophecy 3, 2000's Prophecy 3. Mm-hmm. He immedi- immediately moved on to Dracula 2000. Oh, yeah, he did. Then he did Dracula 2 Ascension mm. and Dracula 3 Legacy, which all sound like they could be prophecy titles. Yeah, those all sound like the prophecy subtitles. I mean, this is Prophecy 3 The Ascent, and then he did Dracula 2 Ascension. He then did uh, White Noise 2. Ooh. Uh, but then, Tom, that was followed with My Bloody Valentine 3D. Okay. And Drive Angry. Okay. That was the, well, that's where we were all heading. That's where this was okay. all heading. Okay. I feel like this dude reached his final form yeah. with Drive Angry, which is a perfect film that is above mm-hmm. reproach. Yeah. This no is notes. the director of Drive Angry. Zero notes on Drive Angry. Oh, yeah. hundred. Yeah. I'm... I'm I'm with you all the way, Tom. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, this movie has Stephen Dorff, which... Brad Dorff. Brad Dorff, not Stephen Dorff. Uh, Brad, Bradley, Bradley Dorff, who, by the way, his IMDb uh, profile picture is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> it's black and white, and it's him looking like he's part of a... Um, right, he looks like the flim flam A barbershop man. quartet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks, like, he looks and, like he's selling balloons on the boardwalk in the 1920s. Yeah. It could it it's it's the farthest from Brad Dorif the picture is, right? Uh, like this is this is the furthest from the roles he typically takes. Yeah, such as this role as Zealot. Uh, he 
is this the first Brad Dorif prophecy? Uh, I am going to venture a guess and say it's the last Brad Dorif prophecy. All right. The reason I bring it up is Brad Dorif is the least surprising actor to show up in one of these. It's like, yeah, of course Brad Dorif's in this. He's all, but it's, the other side of that is that he's in this movie for like 90 seconds nobody okay nobody is in this movie for more than a fifth of the movie uh i feel like everybody took turns kenny banya <laughs> yeah kenny banya is back which is as, funny as it makes him him and christopher walken are the only two actors that are in all yeah. three of these movies you think they hang out you think they know each other and hang out i don't know because they don't have any scenes together i don't think right but they make it seem like Kenny Banya is going to be a main character finally. And then he just vanishes from like the halfway point on. Yeah, he just leaves. He, he walks yeah. out of the movie. Uh, for people who don't remember, uh, Prophecy 2. Uh, and, and when I say people don't remember, I'm including myself because I'm going to fuck this up. But it was Terminator, right? It was... Yeah. Um, the year this woman's going to give... She gets fucked by an angel. Mm-hmm. Uh She's going to give birth to this half angel, half human. Yeah, the Nephilim. And Christopher Walken is coming after her. Mm-hmm. This movie is Terminator 2. Christopher Walken is now good. Yes. It's the son. Uh, it's the half angel. And he has to do something? He has to fight uh, this angel of Armageddon or this angel of genocide at the end. Right. Periel. Periel, yes. Uh, which we'll... We, we'll We'll get to. We'll get to that fight. Boy, will we. <laughs> I, have, I have some thoughts. Um, wait, wait, what is this? What is what? What are you talking about? I just looked up the guy who did played you, Did you get Puriel? lost? <laughs> oh, okay. Did no, get, I did. did you get lost I, in your notes? I sort of did get lost. I looked up the actor who played the evil bad guy. Yeah. And he's credited as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And the only... The, it said Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And I was like, well, I don't think that's true. And I had to click on it. It's the video it's game. Huh? the video game. Sure. He is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Newt Gunray. Uh, oh, boy. He also, yeah, so, he, he's so, also, he gets, so he gets to be British and racist. Yes. <laughs> in that video game. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Good for him. He's in a few of the video games as Obi-Wan. Uh, he's also in Batman Beyond the Movie. He is Jack Walker. Would you know what that means? Nope. Oh. Okay, moving on. Yeah, we can, uh, we can a- put that down. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to name more things. He's a, vo- he's a voice actor. Sure. There's um, a couple of people in this movie who are. Yeah, okay. That checks out. So, Christopher Walken is human. Uh, he, right. He, he we gets, we he left got, him on the street. Yeah, he got turned into a human at the end of Prophecy 2 by Eric Roberts. Yep. Uh, this starts with the, the John Connor... Yeah. At at like a weird uh fuck God church. Mm-hmm. Just like talking about how God sucks. Right. It's and not, his girlfriend's it, really into it. Yeah, his girlfriend is like DTF with this God is bullshit rhetoric. And it's not it's not like a, you know, God is dead or God uh doesn't right. exist or it's not an atheist church. It's just like, no, God's real, but he's a dickhead and doesn't care. Right. By the way, we're in our first section, the holy text. For oh, people sure. who are keeping track yeah but yeah the the church is not like it's not you can't compare it to any like real life version like they're not satanists no. they're not atheists no. they're just like me- a bunch of people who are mad they're at god mad at god <laughs> yeah. uh and brad dorf assassinates him just yeah he does he shoots him sh- through the hand like he shoots yeah. him so many times <laughs> this is angel hitman which okay yeah. Not sure why angels. He even, he even a wears hitman, like the, he even wears like the tiny Leon the professional sunglasses. He does to, to shoot this guy to death. Yeah, fucking Brad then, Dorif wearing those sunglasses. Oh, it's great. Yeah, that was it. Was a real like is that fucking Brad Dorif moment? Because it's kind of like Danzig where he just looks dumb, uh, and you're like, I'm not sure that could just be a guy who looks like Brad Dorif. Yeah. Uh, and then Brad Dorf dies. Yeah, Brad uh, Dorf uh, gets visited by something. I guess we're supposed to assume it's either the main villain angel or this imperial angel, something. But he ends up cutting his, his wrists. He dies. Right. 
So that's it for Brad Dorf. That's it for Brad. He's like the third build, and that is it for Brad yeah. Dorf. Meanwhile, Kenny Benya has to look at the body. He is... Is there no other coroner in this city? He is the only coroner in Los Angeles. Yeah. And also, uh, all, of the, all of the angel wars either start or end in Los Angeles. Yes. It's, because it's, apparently that's where the Garden of Eden is. Yes. In case right. you guys didn't listen to the last episode. It's like Mormon-esque, right? Where they're like... L- la that's where it all happened yeah <laughs> everything in the bible yeah it's like the middle east eh. no los angeles yeah uh so you feel like kenny bania is the star he starts doing like angel research mm-hmm. which is reserved to the protagonist of a film right we stick with him for about the next 10 minutes he is the mm-hmm. protagonist of the film which was shocking yeah <laughs> but so you think John Connor has died. His name is Daniel. Yeah. Uh, and then he comes alive because they didn't tear out his heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it, Kenny Banya like teams up with the girlfriend God hater. And then I was really scared. I was like, are these the heroes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Is Kenny Banya and like a 20 year old actress. The, um, we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And then we learned that the mother, who the Sarah Connor from the previous film, died off screen. Yeah. She was burnt to death by a mob. Boy, she sure was. Yeah. Um, the, the angel Daniel, he comes alive in the morgue. Mm-hmm. He escapes. And then we finally get our, like, T-1000. Yeah. Which is, what's his name? I, I don't remember. Uh, okay, I'm looking at it. Zophiel. Oh, Jesus Christ. Sure. I, I just remember he has a scene where he like orders a donut and it was kind of funny because he's like really serious. Oh, yeah. The donut stuff was funny. Yeah. Where he's like, give me one of the ones that has the colored fragments on it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the donut shop guy, she's like, all right, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck is going on with you? Uh, so he starts chasing after this kid mm-hmm. and then Gabriel gets involved uh, and Gabriel, we learn likes humans now right after spending several years as a human being he's sort of learned that he was wrong right because he comes now Mm -hmm. that's what we learn right He comes hot fire he he gabriel explains to this angel uh he says like have you do you know what it's like to be with a woman Mm -hmm. and then he starts talking about having like having orgasms with sex workers Mm -hmm. uh and and that's the reason he gives for why he likes humanity now Mm -hmm. like i i i'm sure there's other things but that's mainly what he highlights yeah that's the that's the highlight of the conversation yeah he says i come now um also i don't know why he hits uh, he hits the angel with his car the bad Mm -hmm. angel yeah and I get, oh, you know, what? maybe we'll save this for the next section, the, their relationship. And like the bad angel doesn't just keep chasing John Connor. He like stops and chats with human Gabriel. Mm-hmm. I guess, I guess it's like a, oh yeah, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. You know? Uh, so yeah, then he, bad angel goes to like the anti-church, anti-God church, the rundown anti-God church fights, uh, Daniel again. Uh, Daniel impales him. Yeah, he lances him to a wall with a pipe. Yeah, he touches his girlfriend, and she sees a bunch of weird, like orgy imagery. She, yeah, like, she sees like some the real, yeah, it, it's it's some real event horizon shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, I think she's seeing the death of humanity or whatever. Right. So that, that freaks her out. Yeah, and she fucks off. Or no, well, wait, he, fucks he fucks off. He off. fucks off, and then she just hangs out with the angel. She hangs out with the, the angel, the evil who, angel, who wakes up and then like recruits her essentially. Yeah, he kidnaps her. Yeah, to drive uh, him across the desert. Yes, and because every prophecy movie has to have an an extended sequence where the uh, the angel is being driven across the desert. Yes. We were talking before we started. These movies are starting to bleed together. They're officially running out of ideas. I yes, think. yeah. Um, Ken- Kenny Banya is nowhere in sight. Get the, we never so, see Kenny Banya again after that. <laughs> no. Yeah. So basically, Christopher Walken also goes to the desert because he sometimes how knows. We learn that like the symbols that are on Daniel and the thing he has to do is 
he yeah we there's this evil the next god they call him who's getting birthed in the desert i think it has to do with like native american lore i guess uh, like because they say i've never heard of him and they go maybe you're in the lo- wrong religion and so i think the implication is that just like all the religions have some shit and like in this case native americans were the ones who like kind of nailed it uh Christopher Walken knows to follow them. So it's, it's Dan. Oh yeah. One of my favorite parts, by the way, is when Daniel is, uh, who's the good guy, the protagonist Mm -hmm. needs to get away from the church. He grabs a guy on a motorcycle and like shoves him to the road. And they do like a close up of the guy's sad face as he's getting fucking just the shit kicked out of him. Mm-hmm. And then Daniel steals the steals motorcycle. Steals motorcycle. And Hell yeah. And I was does. like, and I was like, was, are, was that supposed to be heroic? He just like assaulted <laughs> that man. Just shoves a guy off his motorcycle. Yeah. And the movie like really makes a point to show the pain on the guy's face. Yeah. It's like my only possession. <laughs> yeah. So he fucks up on a motorcycle. Then um, the, the, the his girlfriend and bad angel have a road trip. Um. And then uh, Christopher Walken is doing his own thing, too. Everybody's driving to the desert. Everybody's the driving point. to the desert. Um, the girlfriend gets almost killed by, I think, the agent, the angel. Uh-huh. Uh, and then Daniel fights that angel, rips his heart out. Yeah, with a piece of his motorcycle. So the motorcycle yeah. was really crucial. It was. Mm-hmm. And then he has two bosses. Then he has to go out to the desert. And fight this, uh, the ultimate, like, this god. It's a god. Yeah, basically. Uh, and he defeats him in the amount of time it takes to make a bowl of ramen. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the, he the, does. F- the fight lasts three minutes. Yeah. Uh, it was very funny to me. Yeah. Because it's this whole buildup. And he's like, I, I am the god. It's going to be a new world order. And, he looks and like then a Daniel d- just beats the shit out of him yeah he looks like a dork too he's got like really yeah. long wizard hair and pointed black fingernails and he's like i will cleanse the world or whatever and then he gets stabbed and then struck by lightning <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he, he does he looks like he's cosplaying the villain in hellboy too. yeah uh yeah and he really gets killed he it's looks, not even hard yeah <laughs> Like, how do you kill a god? You just stab him, and he, he looks, gets struck by lightning. He looks like one of the elves from Lord of the Rings in, like, extremely casual wear. Yes. Like, he's he's wearing, like, a kimono and chilling out in his house. Yeah. It is, uh... It's real dumb. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a real dumb movie, folks. Yeah. And then, it's get- my least favorite prophecy so far. Yeah, and this is the end of Christopher Walken in these movies. He's not in any more after these. Is He's what not? No. Oh, no. I know. So what happens is Christopher Walken uh, is restored to his angelic self, and he heals Daniel's girlfriend and then returns to heaven. Right. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, and then we won't see him again. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. I was like, until next time, Christopher. Yeah, you're right. After this is two more prophecies. Um, those are the two. Prophecy Uprising and Prophecy Forsaken. Now, I'll have to check because we had a plan with this. We might lump those two into one podcast, by the way. Okay. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to look. But uh, either, uh, yeah, way, the- either way, they're two walkingless prophecies. Yeah, and they were both at, came out in 2005. That's a good sign. Yeah, that's a great sign. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Tony Todd's in one of them. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, and that's the extent of the compliments I'll give those movies based on what I'm looking at here. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, this movie, you can see why Christopher Walken was like, and I'm done. It's been fun. But like he get, he got a full arc, which is interesting. Yeah, he really he, did. Gabriel, yeah, Gabriel starts as this like fallen angel, hates man, uh, tries to bring upon the end of man, mm-hmm. uh, gets turned into human, learns to come, mm-hmm. uh, and falls in learns love with the being, joy of coming. Yeah, and becomes a human and enjoys humanity, and then fights to protect humanity as a human. 
mm-hmm. and gets rewarded with being an angel again. It's beautiful, Tom. It is. It's a, it's, man, I get all misty. Yeah. It's a gorgeous story of redemption. Mm hmm. Um, I guess that's all right. That's that's the actual film. Let's let's get into what the hell. Yeah, this is just questions, just questions about these movies. Um, and I want to start with where are all these angels getting fake IDs? They got a guy. Walken ha- okay, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. got a guy. Walken has a driver's license. Very curious about him at the DMV. Mm-hmm. Um, and he says like I learned to drive now. That's his one of his things. Is like he's like I can drive now. Um, the other angels can't drive. Right. The bad angel specifically says, I can't drive. Right. Why can't he drive? I don't know. (laughs) Also, we've been through this, but why can't he fly? He's like a child. Right. They do sometimes, but then like he can't fly to like a destination. Yeah. Like they, they can only fly around rooms. They're useless because, yeah, you're right. He does a bunch of like flippy flips in this and he like flies sort of. Right. Um, But him not driving, there's literally a scene where he's he's kidnapped the girlfriend, this woman, Mm -hmm. and she just pulls over and gets out of the car and refuses to drive. She she crashes the car. She crashes the car. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then she jumps out of the car and runs away and he's like oh i can't drive this please (laughs) can you drive he has to talk her back into the car yeah he is he's an angel yeah uh and he cannot he he can't fly like they can't drive they have the flight capability of like a wounded bat yeah like they they can they can kind of zoom around a room but they can't go distances yeah he is just at this woman's mercy kind of uh and also, like, I'm not sure why she helped him in the first place. He he kind of half kidnaps her because he keeps trying to, like, convince her because I guess she sees all the, the weird death orgy uh, visions. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's very she's like weirdly like when he gets impaled, uh, her boyfriend fucks off on the motorcycle and she approaches and just goes, help is on the way. <laughs> <laughs> like why are you helping this guy who knows man. uh yeah i don't know he kind of starts to convince her that like right da- daniel's evil now and like Periol is like the ultimate light that banished satan from from the realm and he's gonna do the same thing and rescue humanity once again right and like she just they need her to fall for it because mm-hmm. otherwise this motherfucker couldn't get to the desert. No. <laughs> He'd have to take a series of buses. Yeah. He's <laughs> just sitting on a Greyhound. Yeah. <laughs> just like I, looking out the window. <laughs> I can't stress how like useless the angel yeah. is in this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, there's uh, at one point when he, okay. When she, she goes to her car and she's trying to, leave and the angel's there and he has the keys and he's like looking for these and she gets in the car and he reads her mind and says i know that you have a gun because of x time whatever yeah but i also know that you keep the bullets in the glove box right Mm -hmm. yes he reads her mind yes um why does he have to interrogate and then bribe the donut guy to find out that daniel is literally just in the bathroom <laughs> of the donut shop. I don't know, because he's able to do that. Like, Christopher Walken kind of does a similar thing with the guy when he's, like, getting his license or whatever it is he's doing. I forgot what he's doing in that scene. Oh, wait. Is that what we're... Okay, is that how the fake IDs work? Is they turn objects to look like IDs? I guess so, yeah. Because he turns a napkin into money. Mm-hmm. But only the guy only thinks it's money. Okay, so the, the idea is Christopher Walken turned a like like a piece of toast into a fake ID, mm. and the cops reading it, and he's like, "It doesn't say your age or your birth date here," like because it's like a shoddy illusion. Yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I don't know. It's, Same with it, the FBI badge, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I assume so. Um, but yeah, it is funny where it's like they're able to read people's minds in some scenes, like be like, "Your friends called you Sparky when you were a kid," and then in other scenes, right. he has to like ferociously interrogate the donut guy right to, to, and I de- can't... to detect that his angel quarry is 25 feet away taking yeah. a shit exactly like it's so they're so sometimes useless 
Uh, like you said, when they fight, they'll fly. And like in the sequel, in the last one, they're like circling the Garden of Evil, uh, evil Eden. of Eden. Uh, and then in this one, he's like, come on, give me a ride. Uh, the world's just, gonna end. I don't understand any of this. Um, I don't understand why when an angel gets impaled, like he gets impaled, mm-hmm. he's like hurt for a while. Well, they always, they've always been hurt. Yeah. Like that's pretty I still, consistent. I guess, it's not that I don't understand it. It's that I don't under, I, I, I want to cut one of these angels open. I want to see what's going on in there. <laughs> I really need to know what's going on. Yeah. Because like we've established, they seem to sleep. They seem to eat. Um, he orders a donut. Mm-hmm. Uh, they aren't like divine. They're not like made of stardust and like this divine, like intangible beings. They're like hunks of flesh. They're like terminators mm-hmm. where again, they're like hunks of flesh disguised as a human, but they also can like read minds. They can only be killed through the heart. Uh, it's, it's just very confusing. And they seem ultimately like not a threat. They don't seem like a threat. They're they're very they are, but they're like very specifically limited in strange ways. <laughs> right. But like if if you wanted to kill an angel, mm-hmm. if if humanity was just like angels exist mm-hmm. and we had to kill an angel, we could easily kill one, right? Like the military could kill yeah, one. Yeah, you just angels. need like a harpoon or something. Yeah. Just yank yeah. his damn heart out. That's there are things I feel like they're hard, they're easier to kill than like bears are. Uh like you could I I feel like I could kill an angel in this. And I I, mean, I am weak. I wouldn't hate my chances. Yeah. You give us a gun, uh you you knock out the angel with the gun and then you take your damn time getting that heart out and you're done. Yeah. It's basically like killing a human but with one extra step. And that step is only after they're incapacitated. Mm-hmm. So it's it's shockingly easy to kill an angel, I think, in this. I'm not sure why it's a problem. And then if they, oh, oh no, the angel, like, I can't kill him. Then you know what? I'll just drive 60 feet away from them. Yeah. What are you going to do now? There's nothing they can do. Yeah. You stupid, lame bird. Yeah. That's what they really are. You shitty bird. Um... Do all the angels regenerate tissue? I think eventually, yeah. The half... Say that again? I said eventually, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the half angel uh, regenerates. He has to eat a bunch of donuts to regenerate tissue. Yeah. So is that just an angel thing? Is that why they eat? I don't know. I think this is the only time we've seen any of them eat, right? Yeah. I mean, no, It's there's been implied eating. Like Eric Stoltz had a bunch of rappers. Like right, Christopher that's Walken true. was living like a fucking yeah. Christopher Walken was living like a homeless guy. He had like a bed and like a mm-hmm, bunch. That's of food true, and wrappers. a bunch of old food. Yeah, that's true. I guess so. So they just they. It's like it feels like video game rules. Like they're like video game characters where it's like, oh yeah, if you eat food, your health bar goes back up. Uh, and maybe that's why they eat. I don't know. Is that's kind of like I mean, anybody? Yeah, it's not. It's it's not as direct. Yeah, like I can't chop my finger off and then crush a Snickers and grow it back. But right. I mean, but I don't. I'm not sure they can either. I have we seen an angel get its hand cut off or something and regrow it? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think they're weaker than Terminators. They're definitely weaker than Terminators. Yeah, you can't pull a Terminator's heart out. Yeah. Yeah, a Terminator could easily kill Gabriel, the angel. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Absolutely. It's very funny to me. All we we need is like fucking Robocop. Yeah. It's just very funny to me how like, like later in these types of genres, like Constantine, demons and angels are, are divine beings, right? And in Constantine, the idea is he has a bunch of like holy weapons. And it's still like gritty, you know, gritty cop weapons where he has like a Gatling steak gun and bullshit like that. Yeah. Like some real Van Uh, Helsing bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. But like the idea, the game is these are all divine weapons that have been constructed 
to like kill angels and demons in a practical way, right? Mm-hmm. In this movie, it's just like, yeah, if you like throttle them, uh, you could probably knock them out and then rip out the heart. Like they're like they're like animals. They're just they're not. There's nothing supernatural about how to kill them. Not particularly. It's just it's it's Highlander rules where it's like it's a specific body part you have to destroy. Right. Um, but you could still like just hit an angel in the kneecap with a hammer and, and, and bring him down and then just, you know, cut his yeah. heart out at your own pace. Yeah. You hit, if you That's hit an it angel, for the in angel. The, it, yeah, it's, it's just really weird. It feels how like it just, should be harder. Yeah. And it's it, the weirdest part is that they like when Christopher Walken uh, goes to heaven, he gets his powers back. Mm-hmm. He like evaporates into like fluttering Birds. light. Birds. Yeah. Uh, and like, they can do that. They can like teleport into like, things yeah the bird which energy in- implies that they're not physical beings ever but they are well it it implies that they can i guess like dracula like change forms so know. is the implication that like if if you collected all the birds and then stepped on all their heads i guess uh, do you have to remove all the bird hearts yeah probably that's what i would yeah. do just to be sure just to be sure yeah absolutely it's just, it made less and less sense, the series. Mm-hmm. I also don't know what it meant when, um, uh, we don't even really know what the stakes are in this, do we? When the girlfriend is dying, Christopher Walken says to Daniel, you know what heaven is going to be like for her if you don't finish what you start. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that meant. Well, I guess that means he has got to kill Periel. Or else everybody at heaven is going to be like mean to her. I think it's it's just like it's like war on God again, right? Like he's gonna kill, oh, okay. every, kill all the humans on Earth, and then he wants to dethrone God, doesn't he? Yeah, attack and dethrone God. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess she just get bullied real hard. Okay. By a bunch of shitty yeah. angels. No, I guess it's like yeah, new management. Um. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, remember in the first movie there was the um, Native American child. Uh, I remember the Native Americans. I don't remember a child. Oh, she's apparently in this movie. I just read it. Oh, okay. They, they reprise a lot of characters. The waitress from Prophecy 2 oh, is okay. like, where's your friend? I think she's referring to Brittany Murphy. Or maybe that's from the first Prophecy. The other... I don't know. It's that when he goes... When Christopher Walken goes into that um, diner, mm-hmm. the idea is that, that the um, waitress there is from one of the previous films. Oh, okay. They should have brought back Danzig. Well, Danzig's pretty dead, but sure. Yeah, they they could figure it out. Yeah, who gives a shit? Just his face. Yeah, uh, put his put his face on something. I don't care. Put it somewhere. Yeah, like like Daniel could have Danzig's face just framed. Mm-hmm. He just know. has it in like a in a little cameo, or yeah, like in, yeah. a, in a locket around his neck. He just has Danzig's face. Danzig's little crumpled face. <laughs> his little weird goblin face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, stupid film. Yeah, this one is bad. <laughs> it's there's they don't introduce too many more like new things except I think the biggest the most hilarious thing is how much emphasis they put on the fact that angels can't fly. Yeah. And or uh, fly or drive. And the fact that Gabriel learns how to drive is extremely funny to me. Uh, because it means that it's not like they're like... It's a specific thing that angels can't do. Okay, hold on. So at least... It, it, <laughs> we it, need it, to it, stop it, and it, think it, about this. It implies one of two things. Okay. It, it implies that there is something that forbids angels from driving. Right. Or it implies that they just never learned how because there's right. no cars in heaven. That's what I thought it meant. Is that there's no cars in it. Because both are absolutely insane. Yeah, they're both ridiculous. <laughs> because either the idea is that since there's no cars in heaven and they fly in heaven, I assume, they just never bothered to ask any humans like, hey, how do you drive? Yeah, show um, me how to drive also, real quick. It also means that the angels that come to Earth just didn't like, like you know, learn beforehand. Yeah. And also... That also implies that these angels who can read people's minds and who know like how uh, they, they, they've existed for, you know, millions and millions of years or whatever. And they know they've, they've just like, 
they they they're all knowing mm-hmm. uh they just don't they can't get in a car and figure it out right they never like, they never took like the 10 hours it would it would take to just learn right? how to drive effectively but like either th- but even if they they're like all knowing you'd think they could figure out a car pretty quickly like they could get in a car and go oh okay i can do this uh because it implies that cars are so complicated that angels don't understand them mm-hmm. Uh, and that's that's just very funny. Uh, can God not drive a car? Like, do it. Like, are cars just very baffling to them? Like, how dumb are they? Like, a child can drive a car, not well, but they can drive it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's just weird that an angel is like, "Ew, no, can't even get behind the wheel." Yeah. Um, or, or what you just said that God put in some sort of like, like magic like force field yeah, around like cars some, like some kind of v chip like apparently like, i, I guess right. like angels were just hot riding around heaven like douchebags right because and that's like, the next question is yeah. why did and then god's why? like well that's enough of that <laughs> no, why no why car are, no more cars up here why are cars forbidden um i don't think that's what it is because if you remember from the last film christopher walken can use a computer he just doesn't know how mm-hmm and so I think the implication, I think what they were trying to do is the idea is that they are, they do not um, interfere with the technology of man. They're not interested in it, but it also implies that our technology has exceeded their powers. Or exceeded their comprehension. Comprehension, which is very funny Yeah, when they're literally angels. It seems to me... Like, we could probably, in this universe, in, like, the next 20 years, mankind could dethrone God themselves. Like, we could we could build a portal, or, like, maybe it's just a ladder. It could just be ladder to heaven, man, yeah, in this I think universe. Yeah, I think you just need a really big ramp, and then you drive a car yeah. up there. Yeah, and the car, they're going to all go running. Yeah. That, that, really what, fe- that's like that's like why adam and eve got kicked out of out of eden is because right eve like ramped a, a, a sick-ass motorcycle jump yeah and god was like absolutely not get take that motorcycle and get out like it really feels like in this universe heaven and god and angels they're not like holy otherworldly beings they're just kind of like monsters that got like a really like that got to earth first mm-hmm you know, like they feel like very physical. Like I wouldn't be surprised if God was like allergic to eggs. Right. They 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 feel like like prehistoric insects. Yeah. Just like really uh, large bugs. Yeah, exactly. They seem very manageable. Yeah. Uh, and they can't use our like we could literally plan an entire attack on God on like Twitter because God wouldn't be able to know mm-hmm. how Twitter works. No, hell no. Yeah. It's very weird. Mm-hmm. Are we are we ready for the final section? I think probably. All right. This is called "These Boots Are Made for Walking." Oh yeah, uh, it is. Mm. It's just this is it. This is the last time we are going to celebrate Christopher Walken in these movies. I know. And you know what? I think they got everything they need from him. Right. I think that's that's it. I think that's all we need. They used every part of the Walken. This movie, when I saw him with that long hair, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah. Have you seen that before? <laughs> I don't think this hair this length. It's yeah, it's some real Merlin shit in this movie. Yeah, I can't remember Christopher Walken with hair this long, and I was like, this is the peak. I'm I've seen everything, and then he gets on the highway. And he starts playing the trumpet Mm -hmm. as he's driving, Well, as he's driving. And I was like, oh, this is might be one of the best moments of cinema ever. Not a good movie, but like Christopher Walken with long ass hair blasting a trumpet while driving down the highway. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you think of a better like image? No, because no such image exists. This is this is the this is the antithesis, not the antithesis. This is the this is the peak. Right, and it feels like maybe Christopher Walken, because these movies needed him a lot more than he needed them. Oh yeah, of course. It's like, it was, it's been clear from the beginning that he's just <laughs> doing this because he thinks this is fun. Right, and I feel like at the beginning of these movies, he gave them a long list of things he'd like to be seen doing. 
Mm-hmm. And this was like the final one that hadn't been crossed out. Yeah, I need to be cruising down a desert highway just wailing on my trumpet. Yeah, because I'm Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is beautiful. It's a truly beautiful moment in cinema. That's all I have for this section. It's just... Yeah. Oh, well, a- that and... Go ahead. His speech about coming. His yeah. speech about coming is one for the ages, too. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. Him making a plea for the case of humanity just because of how much ass he's been crushing. That's it's a, very funny. That's an all-time Christopher Walken moment, for sure. Right, because the it implies that Gabriel was on the streets when we saw him, like, homeless and depressed. Uh, and then he was like, uh, he was like, well, I might as well learn what this penis does. Yeah. And then he was like, oh my god. Yeah, this penis is pretty dope. Yeah. Also, he says, um, he he refers to sex workers specifically because he says like women who will love I have women who will love me when I can pay them or something like that. Mm-hmm. So that brings up a new question, Tom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's that? How's he making money? Um, I don't know. Donating blood. Uh, yeah. Working, picking up, you know, like like day labor shifts, like working construction for a couple of days or or whatnot. Right. Like he's hanging around in the parking lot at Home Depot. Probably, Just right? trying to hook up with some contractors that'll give him a couple of days of work. Right. Or he's just um, doing, like, sweet crimes. Sweet crimes. Well, that's the... Th- I, he's still, like, not doing great. Oh, no. Yeah, no. Um, he's still he's still living on the street. This kind of goes to the last section. Uh, really emphasizing how useless angels are is apparently Gabriel, when his powers are taken away without the power of flight or his psychic powers he is so useless that he can't hold down a job uh he can't figure out how to make money he has like that's that's like very weird right because he's literally an angel with all-knowing powers so i assumed yeah like you'd think he'd be able to just play the lottery like i get he doesn't have any resources i don't know that he can necessarily see the future no but he could do something right i don't know like he oh okay, wait he's on earth right he has no resources mm-hmm. um and he's so like and a lot of people are like that they're in that situation mm-hmm. um but as humans we have limited skills and we haven't been alive for thousands of years it's like a it's like you don't see a homeless vampire uh cuz they can figure it out right they have enough time they can mm-hmm. kill people for and take their money mm-hmm. they have powers but like he like he's an angel and he just he just is like fuck i got nothing to offer society well does he not like can he not be like a mathematician no like he must be able to do math why i don't know he has god powers can god not do math well we know what the the main thing we know about angels is that they don't pay attention to human society like he couldn't figure out how to search for a woman's address in this dry cleaning computer right like they can't it's drive a car that that's it, one of the easiest things we do it just seems like an angel would have some skill that would prove to be extremely valuable i, don't, I mean maybe he could have gotten a maybe he could have gotten work like as a at, in a jazz band he does maybe, he, do, yeah. he, he does play a mean trumpet i guess when you when you put it that way it's sort of the point of the movie is that these angels are literally nothing uh, they can't. They can't take care of themselves in human world. Mm-hmm. They're so used to the idea. Is they're almost so pampered. They have everything given to them. They don't have to eat. They don't have to sleep. They don't have to have a job. Uh, and the reality is, is that life is way harder for humans than angels. Um, it's like the episode of Star Trek when Q loses his powers, right? Mm-hmm. And then he's human, and then he's upset, and he's like a baby about it. Yeah, he's real bummed. However, he does find use because of his knowledge. He's able to help the Enterprise because he understands how space works and shit, because he's a god. Yeah. So that's why I'm so confused that Gabriel has no knowledge from his experience of being an angel, that none of it can apply, apparently, to the world in a way that is useful. I, I mean, that's what the thing they keep showing us is that the angels are totally aloof. Um, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, he could 
not having a social security number makes it hard to get a job. Yeah. Um, it just continues that funniness where angels really feel completely useless in this. They kind of are. Um, they're like big bugs. Like I said, they're big yeah. bugs. Like they, it feels like they don't even know how to like operate guns, you know, like they can't do anything. He didn't remember. He hands Brittany Murphy the gun and says, You're show right. me how this works. You're right. And he's baffled by the walkie talkie. Like they don't know shit about earth. How do they expect to ever, how, how are they ruling us? How mm. are they ruling us? I don't know, man. I don't know. We need to take them. We need to, we need to shoot. Yeah. Our fucking harpoons. And we need to, we need to drag God from the sky like a whale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we eat him. Yeah. Then, then we, we, eat, then we eat him. We eat his flesh. Yeah. We eat his luminescent flesh. Yeah. His t- delicious uh, luminescent whale flesh. As he goes, whoa. Okay, God is that's, a whale. That's, <laughs> that's what God sounds like. I don't know. It's it's interesting take. The prophecy, I think I think a lot of what we're talking about is kind of the point. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the movies don't explain it enough or like make a good enough point of it. So it seems like it's silly. Yeah. And stupid. The rules. Um, I think that's all I have to say about... That is... That's it. Where I'm, I'm completely depleted of my thoughts about the Prophecy 3 of the Ascent. Oh, wait. L- last question. Sure. Who's ascending? Is it Walken? Gabriel. Gabriel? Yeah. The Ascent? So the whole movie, the title of the movie is about the last 30 seconds of the film. Right. Well, I mean, like you said, uh, this is the completion of this character's arc. You're right. Yeah, you're right. It's the, it's also his moral ascent. Mm hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. good job. Yeah. It made sense to me. No. Yeah. That's a brilliant name. <laughs> brilliant name. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, genius, genius film. Perfect film. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect film. Film from the, d- the writer of Hellwazer hell world <laughs> sure yeah that's i'm looking it up and uh dracula the producer of dracula 2000 okay mm-hmm. i'm looking up both of the writers just just in case just in case here mm-hmm. something else uh the writer of hollow man 2 oh i've never seen it maybe now i should no i need to i need to know how this this uh this brilliant artistic mind continued mm-hmm. the mythology of the hollow man universe yeah. Well, it's also the um, writer Piranha 3 dd Is that oh, a good one? No, that was a bad one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I don't know, guys. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to uh, Bob Grenville yeah. for making us do this. The reason I was like, um, I'm not sure if the next two will be one episode uh-huh. is because Bob has actually asked us to do a podcast about some other set of movies, which will let we'll let people learn okay it looks like five episodes for this so we will do all five okay sure prophecies Fuck and it. then yeah and then we're gonna oh, do man. three episodes of a different film fit series so oh, look man. forward to that uh, mm, mm, witness me i'm gonna die historic on the fury road <laughs> yeah we're really gonna get to the bottom of this prophecy we we are yeah we're yeah. we're, we're three-fifths of the way to the bottom of the prophecy Right. A movie that, a series that I'm starting to think doesn't need to be analyzed this much. No, it's certainly, nobody needs this. Uh huh. <laughs> but we're Bob giving it to this. you anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you want, you can check out our Patreon, folks. Patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. We have exclusive podcasts there like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Mm. We watch movies with our patrons every Friday night uh and other things stuff yeah um we also have a store tpublic.com slash store slash game theory unemployed you can get t-shirts masks mugs stickers posters all kinds of uh, uh, stuff stuff check that out check it out yeah and watch prophecy three starring brad Dorif. yeah <laughs> <laughs> for a time uh-huh. everybody's tagging in and out of this movie yeah <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, This is the Royal Rumble of movies. (laughs) 